Hi, I'm Army Archard, and we're standing outside the Palladium Theater, awaiting the start of the first annual American Comedy Awards. As you can see, the crowd has gathered with anticipation, and we're expecting even more excitement inside. Well, the show's about to begin, and there's Betsy Davis and Andy Harwood from Price Waterhouse with those envelopes, which will be open on the air tonight. We're just waiting for a few latecomers. What are you, crazy? A few latecomers? This ain't, look at this place. The whole place is empty. There's nobody here. It's not, it's the comedy awards. It's not an important event. People are at home turning on the TV. Gee, I think there's a new spokeswoman on Star Search. <laughs> nobody cares. Uh, hi, I'm Army. Oh, pleased to meet you. I'm Navy, and this is Air Force. Oh, have you met my friend Marine? This is a delighted and excited army archer. I'm a disgusted and depressed Gilbert Gottfried. I hope you can hear us over this happy-go-lucky throng. Oh, boy, look, there's a mob scene here. We're pushing people away. Take it away. Take him away. He's talking constantly. Tonight, live from Los Angeles, it's the first annual American Comedy Awards. Starring Steve Allen, Louis Anderson, Army Archie, B. Arthur, Martin Baker, Lucille Ball, Roseanne Parr, Ed Begley Jr., Red Button, Sid Caesar, George Carlin, Carol Channing, Tim Conway, Julia Duffy, Bonnie Franklin, Whoopi Goldberg, Bob Goldthwait, Gilbert Gottfried, Ellen Green, Pee Wee Herman, Norman Lear, John Lovitz, Shirley MacLaine, Jackie Mason, Walter Matthau, Ed McMahon, Beth Midler, Mary Tyler Moore, Carol O'Connor, Bronson Pinchot, Carl Reiner, Rob Reiner, Joan Rivers, Mark Russell, Isabel Sanford, Peter Scolari, Lily Tomlin, Betty White, Don Wilder, Jonathan Winters, Stephen Wright, and Henry Youngman. The American Comedy Awards, brought to you by Dodge. Performance to thrill you, looks to move you. Dodge, setting new standards of performance. And by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper Butler. Good evening, I'm Lily Tomlin, and thank you. the American Comedy Awards. For the next two hours, we celebrate one of the few things that brings people together, laughter. We do that by honoring the men and women who bring that laughter to us. If a group of aliens from outer space landed in my backyard searching for signs of intelligent life and said, we're looking for some laughs, take us to your leader, I'd take them to meet Walter Matthau. This is an important evening. This is the first time that the stars of cable and syndicated shows will compete against network. <laughs> this is the first opportunity that comedians themselves have had to vote on whom they think is funny. And this is the first time that a network is giving a full two hours to honor the funniest people in show business. I would be remiss if I did not remind everyone that the business of comedy is a serious business. May I have the nominees, please? I think he's the new courier to the Contras. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, they gave me another joke. <laughs> He's one of the presidential hopefuls. <laughs> he can put his foot in his mouth and walk away from it. <laughs> and then Neil Simon told me to say, I bet it's difficult to buy three shoe trees. <laughs> I like the first one best. The nominees for Funniest Female in the Motion Picture. <laughs> I almost ruined the whole thing. I was going to read the winner. <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg in Jumpin' Jack Flash. I'm a little black woman in a big silver box. But the top of the thing says fall. Ellen Green, Little Shop of Horrors. Goldie Horn, Wildcats. Mr. Edwards. Let's second think this for a bit. Ah! Oh! This grass. Are you sure I'm the right person for this job? Bet Midler, Ruthless People. I'm being marked down. What is this, the bargain basement? Diane Wiest, Hannah and Her Sisters. The funniest female in the motion picture is Bette Midler for Ruthless People. And, I, and to think I almost didn't show up. <laughs> I think the dress I'm wearing is a very lucky dress. I was married in this dress, and uh, I, think it's, uh, I think it's a good sign. Um, I'm very, very pleased to, to uh, gee whiz, this is weird. I'm very, very pleased to win this. I think um, uh, I owe probably most of it to Paul Mazursky, who, who cast me in uh, Down and Out in Beverly Hills when I hadn't worked for a long, long time. I, uh, it, was, it was about, it was a little bit of, it wasn't a big part, but it was a part that I, I really needed and I, I, I always wanted to express to him how grateful I was for him giving me back, for putting me back on my feet. Thanks very much, George, and everybody who voted for me. I'm Ed Begley. Thank you for that round. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Pat. You deserve it. Thanks for that round of indifference. It's wonderful to be here. Um, and now to the prepared text. All award shows have a moment of nostalgia when they remember the great stars of the past. But to our generation, the past wasn't that long ago. So here's a uh, stroll down memory lane for those of us who grew up in the 70s and some golden oldies of our own. Remember when the Waltons won at seven Emmy straight? John Boy went through puberty till he was 28. Sonny Bono married Cher when Cher was Sonny's honey. But when their show got canceled, Mrs. Bono canceled Sonny. Those leading ladies, Geraldine, Maud Fricker, Tiny Tim, 
the Rockford Files that garnered every known award for Jim. The Brits had Monty Python, the Germans Artie Johnson. While Rickles had a death wish to rival Charlie Bronson, when it came to double acts, the magic word was smother. Jimmy Carter got some laughs, but fewer than his brother. As TV's oddest couple, Jack and Tony had a ball, while Ehrlichman and Holliman, the biggest clowns of all. Who'd have thought that Barbara Eden's jeweled solar plexus prefaced such a nasty piece of work from Dallas, Texas? And though the news from Washington left everybody shook, it brought the season's best one-liner I am not a crook. <laughs> Dick Van Dyke and Mary Tyler Moore in black and white. An absent friend we waited up for, live on Saturday night. Hot Lips, Hawkeye, Radar, Klinger, all of Mash's clan. We miss and mourn poor Chico, yes. Poor Chico and the man. Newhart was the kid to watch and Carson still the boss. Though Johnny hadn't yet discovered rivers still to cross. Carol and the gang, must for lovers of great shtick. And Fanny Fox for lovers of the body politic. The story of our heritage is rich, the legends many. Burns and Allen, Groucho, Gleason, Carney, Lucy, Benny. Uncle Milty, Caesar, Hope, Kovac, Skelton, Kay. Comedy they brought us live is living still today. Living on in Whoopi, Goldie, Woody, Bet and Lily, Robin, Eddie, Gary, Jay, Chevy, Dan, and Billy. Past and present, old and new, they're ours forever after. The memories that last the best are memories of laughter. Thank you. Thank you very much. not my first award show. Uh, my first award show took place in the Garden of Eden. Um, uh, there was, of course, no contest back then between for best male or best female, uh, uh, and we're still not real sure who came out on top. Um, but that's about the past. I'm here because I'm very, very interested in the future. <clears throat> I guess we all wonder about the future. I know I do. Let me explain. I believe that we have a great deal to do with our own future. How we look, how we are, how we feel, how we eat. We make a conscious decision today about what we'll be like tomorrow. As for me, I think I'll be the same sort of person, really, except a little more so. What do you think?
<laughs> the nominees for the funniest female in a television series are B. Arthur, Golden Girls. The man has so much more to offer, you know what I mean, Doug? <laughs> Yeah, I found that out when Mark Perper was running for class president in the third grade. Why, what does that have to do with anything? Well, his campaign slogan was, vote for me and I'll show you my wee-wee. <laughs> Julia Duffy, Newhart. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> you made these by yourself? I tried, but Joanna had to help. <laughs> Estelle Getty, Golden Girls. He's gonna have a baby. And if it's a boy, she can name it after its father, Rick Joe Bob Dundee. <laughs> Shelley Long, Cheers. Those dear souls will share our moment of ultimate joy. Better still, why don't we have them over right here? We'll do it right here. Oh, I don't want those people in my house. <laughs> Betty White, Golden Girls. I live in Florida. Who can tell the difference between a hot flash and a weather front? So the funniest female in a television series is Betty White in Golden Girls. Now, this is a joke. I mean, this is a comedy show, and this is just kind of a put on. We'll put the old broad on, and let's see, you know, we'll, then we'll take it away from her and laugh. Well, I must say, the first time for anything is so marvelous. I'm... I remember. I am genuinely deeply thrilled, but two other ladies deserve it just every bit as much, and we'll all share it. Thank you so very much. And Estelle and Beezy, thank you. cooking us a little dinner. Hi, uh, my name's Roseanne Barr. And I'm Louis Anderson. <laughs> We're uh, happy to announce that we've just been picked to star in a new movie called The Jim and Tammy Baker Story. <laughs> the final years. And... Uh, And we really love being at these Comedy Awards, uh, but the real reason we're out here is because we're on a 25-city tour, and um, we wanted to plug our dates. So we'll be at the Universal Amphitheater July 10th. And Carnegie Hall September 20th. So Thank you. Please come and see us. All oh, the award. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Actually, it's called the When Do We Eat Tour. And, uh, It's like a benefit. Anyway. <laughs> and the nominees for Funniest Male in a Television Series are... Johnny Carson, The Tonight Show. This in from the news desk. God just asked Oral Roberts to divert some of his money to religion. dedicating myself to life, liberty, and the pursuit of every woman in Boston except that one. 
Michael J. Fox Family Ties. Welcomes a woman as a boss. Especially a cute little tomato like that Miss Ryan. Pee Wee Herman, Pee Wee's Playhouse. at the ultimate in napping animal luxury with the Craftmatic Adjustable Dog Bed. <laughs> oh, poor little baby. And it is a great pleasure for me, personally, because uh, I got my start on this man's show, uh, the funniest male in a television series, Mr. Johnny Carson. Yay! They really need a dinner, don't they? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to take a moment before saying anything else. I'm still a little choked up from the guy with the three legs. <laughs> and Shirley MacLaine told me why she was able to do that dance so brilliantly because she was a hooker in the 11th century. <laughs> and she claims I was her best customer. <laughs> I'd give anything to remember that. But what the hell, I gave already. Johnny Carson cannot be with us this evening because as you know, ladies and gentlemen, right now he's in the intensive care unit at Cedar sinai Hospital. It happened when he found out that Joan Rivers was fired from her talk show. And you know, Johnny, it just, it broke him up. <laughs> it just, he just couldn't take it. Right now, he's in an oxygen tent, breathing and laughing. <laughs> and it's, it's a horrible thing. Anyway, but I, I am delighted to accept this award for Johnny tonight because some of the biggest people in the history of the world never, never accepted a comedy award. I have a list here of some of the biggies. Adam. Adam, who said to George Burns, Dad, can I have my allowance? Never accepted a comedy award. The mayor of Sodom, who said to the mayor of Gomorrah, why don't we merge and call it Knott's Landing? <laughs> Never accepted an award. Moses, who said when he came down from Mount Sinai, Charlton Heston is wrong for the part. <laughs> Never accepted an award. Jim and Tammy Baker, the children of a lesser god. Richard Pryor, who said to the Olympic Committee, ain't no way this mother gonna carry that torch. <laughs> and he never accepted the award. Lee Iacocca, who said to Dolly Parton, why do you need airbags? <laughs> never accepted this award. Helen Reddy, who said to boy George, I am woman, what the hell are you? <laughs> never accepted this award. Johnny, thanks a lot. Get well, Johnny. Hi, I'm Whoopi Goldberg. You know, when I was a kid, television was my window to the world. And because of it, I was lucky enough to see a performer who you may or may not remember. I thought of her as one of the funniest women in the world. Her name was Moms Mabler. And 
And the thing I remember most was the fact that I had never seen anyone talk without teeth before. <laughs> Good evening, honey. Not, 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 just don't get all carried away. Did you hear the one about the two women who was walking down the street? One turned to the other one and said, I smell hair burning. The other one said, maybe we're walking too fast. <laughs> And don't you know the sensor lady just dropped her drawers? <laughs> and did you hear the one about, about the woman who was in the hospital dying? Her husband come to the hospital, honey, she wanted to make a confession to him, you know? So he went over to the hospital just to cry. She said, honey, I'm dying. She said, yes, I know. She said, but I got a confession to make to you before I go. She said, I ain't been true to you. She said, yes. I know. She said, but I've been running around with other men, fooling around. He said, yes, I know. That's why I poisoned you. <laughs> well, that's because everybody's crazy nowadays, huh? I mean, you, did you ever see anybody acting normal? It's probably because they just say, well, you know, not like the good old days, honey. I know about the good old days, yes. But I wasn't nothing but a child. A child, 14 going on 15, honey and just as cute as I want to be. <laughs> yeah, honey, hair just hanging down my back, you know, cause I'm half Indian. The beauty parlor take care of the other half, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and my father made me marry this old, dead, puny, moldy man. <laughs> I mean, he was an old man, honey. Santa Claus looked like his son. <laughs> he was older than his mother. I'm telling you, that man was so old that when we went to his sister's funeral, after the funeral, the minister come walking over to him, tapped him on the back and said, how old are you, Pops? Pops said, 91. Minister said, ain't no use in you even going home. <laughs> yes, honey, I thought he never would die. Yes, I thought he never would die. You know, that poison agreed with him. I shouldn't talk that way about the dead, should I? No. Cause they tell you, you mustn't say nothing about the dead unless you could say something good. He dead, good. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I know he dead, cause I had him cremated. Yeah, it's they burned him up. I was determined he was gonna get hot one time anyway. Yeah, that's why I don't like no old man. Cause there ain't nothing an old man could do for me except bring me a message from a young man. And before, thank you. Oh, you mean to say you applauded not knowing it was me, you just applaud? Before I present the next award, I'd like to mention that a category that was supposed to be included in tonight's festivities was cut because of time, simply because of time. The category is for the best funny face made by a comedy director or comedy writer. So for your consideration for next year's awards, here is my entry. Now you have to hold it for five seconds for it to register. One, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> Thank you. And the nominees for the funniest female stand-up comic are Elaine Boozler. I'm always sensitive from the divorce. You know, they take things the wrong way. Hey, nice day, don't you think? Uh, I don't want to make a commitment. 
Whoopi Goldberg. You know, like, okay, like, my boyfriend's really cool, okay? And, like, he's, no, he is. He's, like, totally cool. And, like, I totally love him. Bette Midler. I got married at the same time as all those celebrity girls got married. You remember. Uh, let's see, there's Olivia Newton-John. She was married in Santa Barbara, and everything was dyed the very special pink to match her panties. Joan Rivers. Oh, boo-boo, oh, this is Madonna. Hey, hey. And Lily Tomlin. I didn't think of myself as teacher's pet. It's just that I have nothing in common with a bunch of illiterate seven-year-olds. And the funniest female stand-up comic award goes to Lily Tomlin. lovely award and uh, uh, I thank you and you know it's the re I'll tell you what I feel about tonight it's uh, it's sort of fun to be here you know to be with everybody who makes comedy uh, I don't I don't see this as uh, winning an award in a sense it's uh, in fact I was dreading the uh, possibility and uh, but now that I have it in my hand I'll, I'll take it back to the table and I'll share it with bed and whoopee and everybody else because um, uh, you'll see later on in the show, there's a, there's a category where we all win, and it feels so much better. <laughs> anyway, thank you. I love being here. I'm B. Arthur. Thank you. The recipient of this year's award for Lifetime Achievement is Norman Lear. Norman's work has not only helped to break down the barriers of race and culture, which often divide us, but has also allowed us to see ourselves more honestly, and by so doing, discover the healing power of laughter. The American Comedy Awards is proud to pay tribute to Norman Lear for his many outstanding achievements. In the beginning, Norman worked as a salesman, sidewalk photographer, a non-paid press agent, and an underpaid writer. His first job in television was writing for Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis in the Colgate Comedy Hour. And during the following years, Norman worked with just about everyone who was anyone in show business. Then came the movies, and after a string of successes, Norman was nominated for an Academy Award for Divorce American Style. Then he heard about the British TV show that was to be the model for his biggest hit, All in the Family. At first, the networks turned it down, saying it would be too much of a shock to the American viewers. But at the 1972 Emmys, All in the Family won seven of the top awards and led to a string of new successes. There's only two places a woman belongs, don't Florida. Don't say it, James. <laughs> James, don't say it. The kitchen in the bedroom, Florida. The kitchen in the bedroom. There's no such thing as gay dwarfs. <laughs> Come on, Arthur, you've read Snow White. Hey, old faggot, they scared to fight. What's that supposed to mean? You know damn well what it means. If you two ever really started going at one another, inside of five minutes, he'd be calling you... Don't say it. Nigga. He said it. These are the 1970s. We have to be thankful that we're just functioning. What again, what again, what again, what again, what again, what again? What kind of man could produce so many hit shows when so few thought they would make it? Academy Award winner Patty Chayevsky said it was because he dispensed with the dopey wives and dumb fathers, the pimps, hookers, hustlers, private eyes, junkies, and trendy cops, and replaced them with the American people. Norman, said Chayevsky, took the audience and put them on the set. This is America land that I love. Well, I love it too, Mr. Bunker, and it's because I do like protests when I think things are wrong. And stand beside her. 
and guide you. The, the, the light of the ship is the principal upon which this country was based. With the light from above. Listen to me. It's in the Bill of Rights. From the mountains. Why do you think we broke away from the England prairies, to begin with, huh? Because we didn't agree oceans. with them. We demanded Why freedom. Why would folks? Gee, it's guys like you. It's guys like you. What all this for a reason? Bless. I mean, you're letting us in there. You're doing close minded. You're prejudiced. You're prejudiced. You're prejudiced. Not anymore. I'm leaving. I'm prejudiced. You're prejudiced. You're prejudiced. You're prejudiced. You're prejudiced. You're prejudiced. My home, sweet home. Norman has always been a man of ideas rather than a man of contrivances. The comedy he leaned to was a comedy that revealed something about the American scene. I mean, he's always... Uh, um had it in his mind to, to, to reach and do something greater and always challenge and, and, and never just go the easy route. An awful lot of very good comedy comes out of pain. Uh, pain and trouble and sorrow and, and it is funny, there are, there are funny things that, that happen from that. And using that truth, he made a lot of very important changes in television comedy. And can I trust you to keep a secret? <laughs> what is it? Don't look at me, Bib. <laughs> Vivian, I'm pregnant. <laughs> He's a marvelous doctor of scripts. There was an ingredient that Norman had that the other shows didn't have. You see, it's a fine line with this, uh, with bigotry. It's a fine line to make it entertaining. Anything I can do for you, don't uh, hesitate to ring my bell. Bye-bye. <laughs> George, I believe you were right about this place after all. Imagine an English neighbor. Good. God, you're black. Um, what is, what is that uh, little black box on the side of the TV? Oh, I'm pleased you noticed that so quickly. You certainly are regaining your awareness. Oh, well, I, it's just that I've never seen one of those before. Oh, well, I don't imagine you have. That little black box is a telemeter. That's a telemeter? What is this, a pay TV? Oh, no, no, no. You can't buy that. You have to be chosen. A telemeter measures ratings. Ratings? Oh, don't tell me. Are we? Everyone here, Mary, yes. Including me now? That's right. I can't believe it. That I, Mary Hartman, am finally a member of the Nielsen family. <laughs> By showing us how to laugh at our differences, Norman Lear brought us all a little closer together. He once said, I consider myself a writer who loves to show real people in real conflict, with all their fears, doubts, hopes, and ambitions rubbing against their love for one another. Thank you. I, I can't believe this evening, and I, I could not be more grateful for the, uh, for the life I've been blessed to leave, to, to live. 
Actually, when you give a fellow a, a, a life achievement award, it's like he's going to leave it. Uh, and I want you to know, I feel my career has just begun. I ain't leaving. But as a, as a kid of the, the Great Depression, having watched uncles on both sides of my family uh, dead broke and on bread lines, I can't get over the fact that I could spend the past 38 years of my life not only making a terrific living and becoming what my uncles, those uncles used to call a good provider in those days, but doing it in the kind of work and in the kind of company that had me laughing, laughing all the way to this moment. I worked in the company of some great performers, some of you, some of whom you just saw on that tape, and without whose talents I know you know I could never be here. Also in the collaboration with uh, a host of other great talents, writers and directors with whom I also share this award and without whom I could also never be here. I toast all of them tonight, and I toast one other collaborator, one that each of us can be grateful for, in or out of show business, whatever business we're in. I want to toast that collaborator, that gift of God, that inner voice that speaks to us in the night, slipping us solutions to problems that we take to bed. And if that sounds sentimental or more spiritual than uh, this occasion calls for, so be it, because that's always the way I feel about comedy. A big audience engaged in a belly laugh, and I've seen a lot of them here tonight, is, is a kind of spiritual experience, a kind of love-in. And if the world could somehow string enough of those moments together, all of life would be a love-in. And that effort, that pursuit, is what people who spend their lives trying to make you laugh are all about. I love them, I've loved spending my life with them, I salute them, and I thank you all. The American Comedy Awards. Oh, hi. Now, to help me present the next award, I want you to meet a friend of mine. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, open up the cage. Yeah, let him out. Come on here, Bobcat. Come on, Bob. Come on, man. Hey, thank you very much. Wow. What? Hi, Whoopi. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I thought you were going to dress tonight. Well, I got I to gotta explain why I'm just like this. Um, remember that movie we did, Burglar? <laughs> It didn't really make as much money as I expected. <laughs> so I'm kind of in between gigs now. Actually, hi, it's a big thrill to be on the Comedy Woods. Look at all these confused white people. <laughs> I don't know why I'm here. They're like going, is this an actor? Is he like really screwed up? You said the S word. Well, all I right, want to, you know, swear. Now, Actually, I'm here because maybe I can meet Norman Lee. I figure, you know, hell, they're running condom ads. Maybe they'll give me a sitcom now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hi. Hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> we are here to, to present. You. Oh, it's me, the color girl. We're here, with, we're here to present the Funniest Male Stand-Up Comic Award. <laughs> Buzz, I nominated. No, you weren't. Why not? I don't know. Could it been maybe you offended somebody? I don't know why I wasn't nominated. I can't read this shit. It's like Bob Hope crap. <laughs> yeah. Now all the Hi, Whippy. All the people. Hi, hi, hi. I'm not even nominated for nothing. Hey, Hi, the next No, what we're brought here for is to give the award away for the funniest male stand-up comedian. That's 
That's right. Uh huh. I think they should do these by height. <laughs> Wait, before we read the nominations, what? you know, if you're nominated for the funniest damn comedian and, and, and you don't like, and you know, you don't win, remember, Boy. Boy. remember you're not funny anymore, that means. <laughs> you know? Because just, you know, it's about time we have comedy contests, you know, there's not enough competition in our business as is. It's about time we organize the backstabbing. Who are we kidding? Oh, yeah, yeah, I thought you look at Bette Miller, you're almost going to rip her head off. Oh, hi, Bette, I'm really glad. Yes, Whoopi. Let me tell you, Sam Kennison is, is is one of the nominees. Well, good luck, Sam. For, good luck. For funniest male stand-up comic are Bob Goldthwait, Billy Crystal, <laughs> Bob Goldthwait, Robert Goldthwait, Jay Leno, Eddie Murphy, Bob Goldthwait, Richard Pryor, Bob Goldthwait, um, Robin Williams. May I have the envelope, please? You already yanked it out of my pocket. <laughs> Kinda of felt good. No, I got and a the Woody. Funniest man. Stand up comic award goes to Robin Williams. Yeah! Um, not here. It says don't accept the award here. Well, um, well, Robin's not here tonight, but. So if he wants it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have this in my living room. I don't mind accepting this because I think I was unnecessarily humble the last time. Okay. Carol Channing. <laughs> and my name is Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> oh, Pee Wee, it's such a joy to be with you. I never miss one of your television shows. <laughs> well, it's lovely to meet you too, Miss Channing or Carol. Oh, that's... <laughs> That's my name. You're my favorite Broadway star. What Pee Wee and I have just engaged in is called television award show chit chat. <laughs> there are all kinds. For instance, the, gu gu the gushy strangers who've never met before. <laughs> I love your gown. <laughs> You're suit. I think you're swell. I think you're cute. <laughs> I'm doing a pilot. I am too. Mine's for Paramount. Mine's named Lou. <laughs> two other people who have indeed met before, but they hate each other's guts. <laughs> the same old gown. Same old suit. You look like hell. You think you're cute? I'm doing a pilot. Silly twit. It's for a lot of bucks. Who gives up? <gasps> and now, as ourselves, two people who are absolutely delighted to be presenting the American Comedy Awards for... Funniest record and or video, male or female, or group. And the nominees are... Best of Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd! It's address code for detectives <laughs> and robbery homicide. Section 3-605.10.20.20.24.70. Playing with your head, George Carlin! Can you look at those strangers places? Did you ever look in the freezer for your car keys? You have to. Why? They might be in there. Jumpin' Jack Flash, Whoopi Goldberg. Can you back up, Sam. No. No. Ah! Yes. 
Shave your legs today. Six months later, you gotta shave them again. <laughs> Don't bother. And the funniest record and or video, male, female, or group award goes to... The winner is Beth Midler. Mud will be found Night, what can I say? <laughs> I'm uh, completely c confused and, and befuddled. I didn't know anybody ever saw that. Hi, Richard. I didn't know anybody ever saw it, but gee, I'm so pleased. I'm, 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 I'm beside myself. Um, the, um, the video was made by um, Bob Kaminsky and Tommy Schlamy, and we all worked semi my heart on it, but I'm thrilled and delighted that you love <laughs> We didn't really bust our chops on it too much, but gee, I'm thrilled and delighted that you liked it, and I, I hope if I win another award tonight, you'll be just as pleased to see me. Thank you. comedian starting out walks into an audition with high hopes, uh, a racing pulse, and a piece of material. Uh, this is the piece of material I used when I got my job on Laugh-In, uh, so it goes back uh, a few years. Um, your response is appreciated. <laughs> this, this, uh, this piece is about a woman who has a problem. Um, and many of us have similar problems. I think, you know if you, you, I think you know you have this problem if when you're leaving a party, you overhear someone say, did she have a purse? <laughs> My name is Lucille W. I'm a rubber freak. <laughs> it's all right, I can talk about it now. Of course, when there, were, there was a time when I couldn't. When I look back on it, I think it all started with rubber bands. I wasn't actually swallowing them in those days. I just sort of munched on them. <laughs> Sometimes I'd take one and stretch it from one eye tooth to the other, sort of twang on it. <laughs> then one day I sat down to write a lyric for one especially good tune I'd twanged. I must have blacked out. Because when I came to, I realized I'd eaten the eraser off my pencil. Wasn't no time at all, I was up to 20 pencils a day. All my friends, my relatives, they started saying, Lucille, don't you think you've had enough? <laughs> I thought I could handle it, I really did. I thought I could quit any time I wanted. Instead, I became a secret eraser eater. I started to take all my household money and spend it on art gum. I just couldn't seem to get enough. I was putting on weight. One day, my husband came home early. I was just finishing off a typewriter eraser. <laughs> he caught me. 
with the brush sticking out of my mouth. <laughs> that was the first lie. I told him I was chewing on my eyelashes. <laughs> From then on, it was just straight downhill all the way. I went right on the heavy stuff. Things started to disappear around the house. Oh, at first I was careful, you know, door stops. <laughs> Backs off the shag rugs. <laughs> Tip off mother's cane. Sometimes I'd be playing cards with the girls. I don't know what would come over me. I'd just jump up, run into the kitchen and eat a spatula. <laughs> Pretty soon, though, I just didn't seem to care anymore. The garden hose went. <laughs> On rainy days, I started to hang out around grade school cloakrooms. It was the court psychiatrist, God love him, he saved my life, he really did. He told him, this woman is no criminal, She's, she needs help. I was down on my hands and knees thanking that man. I ate his crepe soles. <laughs> well, it's been a long, hard battle back, but I'm well now. Of course, just to remind myself, I still keep a snow tire in the closet. <laughs> But thanks to medical technology, major breakthroughs in psychiatric care, I'm no longer a woman obsessed with an unnatural craving. I'm just another normal, socially acceptable drunk. investigating the proliferation of award shows, I have been asked by our defense attorney to read the following. Over 700 comedy performers determine the five nominees in each category. Pricewaterhouse sent out the ballots and tabulated the final votes. In the male and the female lifetime achievement categories, all five nominees have accomplished so much that it was decided they should all receive an award. You know, I think this would be a good idea to do in the other comedy things, you know, and the other award. Think about it. Okay, and the Lifetime Creative Award was based on an overwhelming choice of initial nominating round. One of tonight's nominees, who is always a winner, Mr. George Carlin. <laughs> I'm here to present the award for the funniest newcomer, male or female. And you must remember that the word newcomer is a little misleading. It's not really true. These comedians may be newcomers to the public, but to their friends and families and teachers, they've been carrying on, showing off, and disturbing the peace for a long, long time. <laughs> now, I mention teachers because many comedians begin their careers as class clowns, the schoolroom being an ideal place to start. And yet, we must remember that not all class clowns go into show business. As we have noted tonight, many of them enter the ministry. <laughs> Some of them join the Marines. And of course, politics is loaded with them with an alarming percentage making it all the way to the White House. <laughs> now, my own, career, <laughs> my own career as class clown began one day in the third grade when the teacher caught me fooling around in class and she said to me, Mr. Carlin, you can either apply yourself and accept responsibility, or you can act silly. And I thought, well, hey, <laughs> as long as it's optional, I'm going to act silly. And so I began my career. Now, usually it would happen when I was bored in class. You know, they'd be teaching the usual propaganda, nine times five, six times eight, something really misleading. And I'd be daydreaming, 
looking around the class, wondering which one of the girls was going to need a brassiere first. And I thought to myself, I thought, well, as long as I'm not going to learn anything, why not deprive the other children of their educations? And so I would set about disrupting the class by attracting attention to myself. Let me briefly review a few of the procedures for attracting attention to yourself as class clown. First of all, there is the digital pneumatic cheek pop. Something we're all familiar with, simple and reliable and time honored, but should never be attempted unless you're absolutely sure of where your finger has been recently. <laughs> Just to do a few more. And you know, it's, it's really, it's times like these when I realize what a strange way to make a living I've chosen. It really makes a mockery of creation, doesn't it? I mean, God went to all the trouble of creating a carbon-based chemistry which would lead to human life so that I could stand up here and go <laughs> Makes you wonder about God's priorities, doesn't it? Now, another very effective device for the class clown was closed mouth screaming. <laughs> Not only did this disrupt the class, it often got you the afternoon off for a quick trip to a nearby psychiatric clinic. And let's not forget one of the most important skills for the class clown, cracking the knuckles. Yes. And I liked it mainly because it made the girls sick to their stomachs. You know, that's all you really want to do when you're nine or 10 years old is make the girls sick to their stomachs. If you could just get one of them to throw up on her desk in the morning, you knew that it was gonna be a terrific day. But usually, the class clown saved his best stuff for lunchtime when you were drinking your milk. And he'd try to make you laugh in such a way that the milk would come out of your nose. And not just milk, soda, potato chips, whole olives, anything. In fact, one time, my friend Michael Davey passed an entire cheese sandwich through his nose. Provolone on Kaiser Roll, as I recall. Sister Annunziata thought it was a miracle. She became completely unnerved and sent everybody home. The class clown wins another for the people. All right, now. Without further ado, don't you really hate people who say without further ado when there hasn't been any previous ado? I would like to present the nominees for the category of funniest newcomer, male or female. And they are Alf. Maybe we should have called first. Well, I had the music pretty loud. I probably would have heard the phone. <laughs> Mark Lynn Baker, Perfect Strangers. I go from the keys, I don't have my pants, I can't do this. She will just have to have the baby at some other time. Why don't you help me? <laughs> Roseanne Barr, The yes, Tonight you know, Show. Do you think we should talk about our sexual problems? You know, like I'm gonna turn up Wheel of Fortune for that. Woody Harrelson, so cheers. Me, I think I'd like to be alone now. <laughs> well, I guess it'd be easier if I left. <laughs> and Sam Kinison, Rodney Dangerfield's young comedian. There wouldn't be world hunger if you people would live where the food is! <laughs> and the funniest newcomer, Male or female award goes to... to order additional envelopes. <laughs> the winner is Woody Harrelson. Cheers! Woody cannot be here tonight. I'm happy to accept this for him. Thank you very much. And congratulations, Woody Harrelson.
The award I'm about to present goes to a man who's more than a talented performer. There's a showbiz term, top banana, second banana. Well, this man's the whole bunch because he's got lots of appeal. Um, <laughs> night after night, year after year, he plays second banana to the late night legend, Johnny Carson. Ladies and gentlemen, the first winner of the second banana award, Ed McMahon. <laughs> recognition of your lifelong service to comedy, I'm proud to present you with the second banana award, or as we call it, Timmy. The Timmy. I don't know what to say, Betty, I'm speechless. He isn't. You mean he talks? Yes. Just press his banana. And that makes him talk? Certainly, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, uh, thank you very much, Ed. Yes, uh, I am the world's first to talking award, and uh, thank you very much for selecting me. What time do we go home, Eddie? No, no, I don't want to seem ungrateful. I can see that, of course not. And I'm not the kind of a performer who wants the award but won't show up to accept it. Well, of course not. My goodness, I can see by your being here with your very presence. It's just that I don't have room in my home for an award this size. Is there something wrong with me, Eddie? Huh? I don't know, I, I think it's the banana. It seems a little undignified. Maybe we could shorten it. Now hold, Toad. Before you start shortening my banana, I just want to explain one thing to you. I'm just not another pretty fruit here, you know that. I mean, I'm not like an Emmy or an Oscar. I mean, I could be valuable in your house. You got a little lean to your house, I could actually straighten it out for you. You know what I mean? So what do you say we hit the road? No, I, I, I don't think so. It uh, won't work out. Well, uh, just a minute, Dad. Hold it here. Ooh. Just a moment here. Wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe we could work something out. I would certainly hope I could hope use so. a doorstop. Oh, great. Well, thank you very much. And you're going to appreciate this because I'm in great shape just to feel that. Boy, you really are. How do you stay in such great condition? Exercise, Eddie boy. Exercise. As a matter of fact, I'll show you every time I get up in the morning, I'll do these for you, and then you won't have to do them yourself. You just get down there and hit the dog she calls like that. No out the line like this. Really swing under there. Like that. A couple of jumping jacks like That's that. That's wonderful. Good. Yeah, well, That's you get to them push-ups like it is, too. And, of course, like these. So I'll be a good <laughs> party. Okay. All right. Let me just take a minute and thank the little people. Oh, great. You I get this. Right. Now follow me. Right. <clears throat> I don't think so. American Comedy Awards will continue in a moment. I am Stephen Wright. What a nice night for an evening. It's a nice building. This would burn good. I'm going to get a tattoo over my whole body of me but taller. Woke up this morning out of a dream. I went right into a daydream. I was having a dream that midgets were trying to assassinate me. So I bought a bulletproof car, but since I am midgets, I bought a convertible. <laughs> if you shoot a mime, should you use a silencer? <laughs> Recently, I walked all the way across Texas looking for my dog. I walked all the way from one state line to the other looking for my dog. Got to the other side, he was behind me the whole time. When I was out in the middle of Texas, a UFO landed and three one-inch tall guys got out. They walked over to me. 
I said, are you really one inch tall? They said, no, we're really very far away. Are there any questions? Right now, I'm living on a one-way dead-end street. I don't know how I ever got there. I'm beginning into astronomy, so I installed a skylight in my house. The people who live above me are furious. The guy who lives across the street has a circular driveway. He can't get out. I've been making wine at home, but I make it out of raisins, so it'll be aged automatically. <laughs> Hermits have no peer pressure. <laughs> Do you think when they asked George Washington for his ID, he just took out a quarter? George trying to decide something. Call it in the air, me or Tails. <laughs> About a year ago, my girlfriend was on the pill using a diaphragm in an IUD all at once. Recently, she had a baby. Baby was born wearing armor. <laughs> I wear eyeglasses during the day. Yesterday, I was wearing my eyeglasses during the day. I was walking down the street, and all of a sudden, the prescription ran out. Thank you for the prestigious Mike Stand Award. I appreciate it. Take it easy, thanks. Thanks. Hello, it's me again. I've been chosen to present as the man to present the Lifetime Achievement Award, female. If anyone deserves that award, it's uh, Carol Mathau, who's my wife, putting up with me for all these years. Unfortunately, she did not make the cut. <laughs> Here are the five women who are the recipients of the Lifetime Achievement Award. Lucille Ball. What a wonderful business I am. I've always considered it a privilege to make people laugh and a great honor when they did. And I can't think of a greater honor than having a group of your fellow comedians get together to let you know you are someone special. I want to thank all of you, old friends, new friends, and especially the brilliant new comedy talents who keep America laughing. You've made me very happy. Carol Burnett. Mary Tyler Moore. I'm having a little difficulty in accepting this award tonight. Um, I've always been what you might call a reactor. Even here on Broadway, it's the other people in the show who help to make me look good. I react to them. But tonight, I'm on my own. And for the television audience, how easy it would be if I could say, oh, Rob. It's just what I wanted, or, gosh, Murray, this is terrific, or Mr. Grant for me. But they're not here, so I can't do that. Um, so I guess I'll just say on my own, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Bet Midler. and Lily Tomlin. We're too young for this! <laughs> yeah, but just look at it this way, the pressure's off. That was the way to get off. Oh, 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 I missed my cue again. Well, anyway, uh... Think it of is. all the people who helped you get where you are, girl. I know, and what would be appropriate if we had something funny to say. Yes, well, hey. <laughs> Our careers are over. Let's retire <laughs> next year. Uh, the thing I would like most is if I could only meet Lucy. I know. 
So, Lucy, if you're watching, uh, maybe you could have me. I know you've had Bet to tea, maybe, or you've met her, but maybe you could have, well, I don't want to beg or anything, but. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my, uh, and then maybe we could watch the ballet sequence together. Uh, that's my favorite segment. No, chocolate. I like the ballet oh, best. Well, all right. And uh, you know, and slowly I turned. Oh yes, yes, yes. Okay, so, oh Lucy, please, maybe I, that could happen. Uh, I'll arrange it. <laughs> I met her once. I met yeah. her once. Okay. okay. Oh, oh, this would be great. Oh, bless you. Okay, this is the only thing that makes it all worthwhile. Don't you think? I, I agree. <laughs> well, I'm completely flabbergasted. You know, oh, they told me, me. I, 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 wa I was uh, nominated for a whole bunch of things, and I, I went away to Europe, and I lost the envelope, and I didn't remember which one I was nominated for, and I certainly never expected to win a Life Achievement Award. I'm only 29, and <laughs> I mean, I, God knows I've, uh, I, you know, I, I really have worked hard, but everybody in this room has worked very, very hard. And, and, and nobody uh, ever makes it on their own. Everyone has a lot of people ha helping them. I, for instance, could not go on without my hairdresser. So, for all the hairdressers who've helped, you know, curl my locks through the years, for all the writers who've helped, and all the producers and directors, and my husband, and little girlfriend, we're gonna make a movie together next season if the directors don't Am go I on the strike. lucky one? <laughs> Thank you, everyone, who voted for me, and I'm glad Lil's with me tonight, and we're gonna go see Lucy, all right. Okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, from the New Heart Show, Julia Duffy and Peter Scolari. Peter, please, behave yourself. We are in public. I've been asked to read this amusing anecdote, and I work alone. Go get them, Muffin Lips. It seems there were these two Chinese gentlemen, Dong Wong and his son, Chong Wong, who were in Bloomingdale's when they were approached by a sales lady. Dong Wong turned to his son, Chong Wong, and said, what color sheets would you like? And Chong Wong said to his father, I prefer blue. Dong Wong then smiled at his son and said, I prefer green. And the sales lady smiled at both of them and said to me, See, two Wongs don't make a white. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. That was the punchline. <laughs> two Wongs don't make a white. <laughs> Works twice. <laughs> well, that was a, some story about the two Chinese, Chinese gentlemen you just told. For a minute there, I thought you were caught between a walk and a hard place. <laughs> Oh, that was a joke also. I see. And the nominees for Funniest Female Performer of the Year, finally, <laughs> Carol Burnett. <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg. And you know the same lady wasn't my welfare worker, but behind me in line. Bette Midler. <laughs> Lily Tomlin. I refuse to be intimidated by reality anymore. What is reality? Nothing but a collective hunch. <laughs> Betty White change color if it stays red they say you're not pregnant but if you are pregnant then it turns light pink or light gray i had drapes that color once and the funniest female performer of the year if you can believe it bet midler I'm 
amazed and overwhelmed. I, I guess I should get off, but I, 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 there are a few people that I would like to thank, uh, aside from my fellow comedians. Um, Paul Mazursky, of course, is who I thanked before, and the, the two Zuckers and one Abrams who, who directed Ruthless People. I guess I had one hell of a year. I really did. I had three years where I didn't, I, where no one would hire me, and then suddenly I got all this work. And I, I thank you, Arthur Hiller, too, and thanks to the, all the people at Disney who, who, who made a big fuss over me when I was, you know, really just a schlepper. Thanks, thanks very, very much. Thank you very, very much. I just snuck over here from <laughs> snuck over here from public public television. You know the fuzzy picture with the auction, right? We'll be back with the concert after we grovel on the floor for money a while longer. <laughs> anyway, we are now in our bicentennial year of the Constitution, my friends, and that Constitution ingenious document, which wound up protecting Nazis and the Ku Klux Klan and Larry Flint and Oliver North and the entire computer dating division of the PTL club. <laughs> and so is it not an injustice in that all of we comedians are bestowing awards on each other and yet ignore the politicians who supply so much merriment in America today? <laughs> Where is the comedy award for President Ronald Reagan who when the Iranian crisis Oh, it started to uh, happen last November, he thoughtfully provided us with two conflicting answers for the price of one. Like the time he said, we were not trading arms for hostages and we're not going to do it anymore. <laughs> Two days later he said, we will not yield to terrorist blackmail, 2,000 anti-tank missiles, a Bible and a cake maybe, but that's it. I still can't get over the fact we gave a Bible to the Iranians, right? Just the perfect gift for your average fanatic Muslim fundamentalist. <laughs> Where's the comedy award for Donald Reagan and George Shultz? When the story broke last November, Reagan didn't know anything about it. Reagan found out about it from Brian Gumbel. <laughs> George Shultz still doesn't know about it. George Shultz doesn't think the Shah can hang on much longer. And so the question is not what did the president know and why didn't he know it. The real question is, do jelly beans cause amnesia? <laughs> Where is the comedy award for the entire Democratic Party? Where being the front runner in a presidential race is considered to be a great way to meet girls. <laughs> And a couple of weeks ago, when Gary Hart's difficulties were revealed, at the time, I said that if these sexual allegations are true, Mr. Hart should get out of the presidential race and into TV evangelism where he belongs. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, then, the issue became adultery and its relevance to a president's ability to govern. Well, let's look at the record. As far as we know, we've only had two presidents who never committed adultery. Nixon and Millard Fillmore. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson, historians tell us that Thomas Jefferson was so loved by his slaves that they had a special name for him, Dad. <laughs> so that's what we celebrate. In this bicentennial year of the Constitution, we celebrate the average American's ability to look at our elected officials and say, that's entertainment. And I'll tell you what else is American. Me standing up here, doing a very American thing, playing Battle Hymn of the Republic on a Yamaha piano. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, here from Perfect Strangers are Bronson Pinchot and Mark Lynn Baker. The uh, nominees for Funniest TV Star and a Special oh, Mailer. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. What are you doing? The nominees for Funniest TV Star oh, and a oh, Special. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What are you doing? I'm reading the nominees. No, I'm, I mean, uh, 
Where is your character? Oh, oh, I'm, I'm not going to do it tonight. I forgot to tell you. The You're 90s, not going to do it. No, I'm in this. I'm in this incredible, like, right brain mode. A right brain mode. Right, and the, and uh -huh. like the language, you know, the character uh -huh. and the accent, the language center. I feel are all on the left. Is that brain. right? I, yeah. I I didn't know that. That is uh -huh. correct. Mm -hmm. And the I just there's this incredible activity yes. over here, and there's just nothing over here. It's just tingling. Um, it's tingling. So yes, tingling. Mm -hmm. over here, Wait, there's just nothing, nothing going on. Nothing. Where? Over here? Right Wait, over just here. tell me. Oh, nothing. Here? Here? Yeah. Here? Yeah. Wait. Hello, Posty. <laughs> Hello. Say hello to the people. Hello, people. Mm -hmm. What are they doing here? Well, they're watching us present an award. This is an award ceremony. Well, of course it is. Don't be ridiculous. Mm. The nominees for best sheep herder with suckling young no, male no. or... No, no, no. This is not a sheep shearing award ceremony. This is a comedy award ceremony, see? Oh. But before we present the awards, we're supposed to ingratiate ourselves. Yeah? Huh? Yeah. Uh. What is ingratiate ourselves? Ingratiate ourselves means to make friends with the audience. Oh. Yep. No. I, I, no. We can make friends from up here. Look, I'm sorry. Yes, let me, I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Here. I don't. No. Will you stop it? All right. All right. But why don't we forget about ingratiating ourselves and just present the award? The nominees for funniest. Wait, oh, oh, I forgot something. What? Where was I? Right there. Oh. The nominees for funniest TV star in a special, male or female, are. Carol Burnett for Fresno. George Carlin for On Location. You know what I say? I say, give me a balloon. Sometimes I say it loud. Give me a balloon! Billy Crystal for On Location, Billy Crystal. Sammy. Billy, how are you, babe? How you doing? Hold me close. This is for you and you only, man. I am having such an office being here with you. You know what I mean. Gary Shandling, 25th anniversary special. Yes, do we have uh, Frankl study on existentialism? Uh, no, we don't have that. I said, well, then just give me a hustler. That'll be it. <laughs> Robin Williams, an evening at the Met. When you look at Gaddafi, doesn't he look like a cross between Omar Sharif and Charles Manson? Can't that explain something? <laughs> He's got the handsome face, but the eyes are going helter skelter. And the funniest TV star in a special male or female award goes to Robin Williams, an evening at the Met. He is not here, but uh, we will be happy to accept this award on his behalf. I will be happy to do that. Thank you. Five talented men have been chosen for the lifetime achievement in the field of comedy. Steve Allen. This could be the start of Suckling Pig. Hi, I was just writing a Hawaiian musical. I am uh, flabbergasted. And it's, <laughs> if you've ever had your flabbergasted, you know how painful that is. But to think that one's own peers would uh, vote an honor like this is, is uh, truly touching. I, I, I've never hung around the peers uh, very often. I can't swim, but it is a wonderful <laughs> honor. And when I look around and uh, see the, the, the company of this particular category, I am aghast. I am uh, uh, touched, I mean. And it comes at a wonderful time. You had no way of knowing this, those of you who voted. But just this afternoon, a, a perfect stranger attempted to uh, throttle me with my own sweater. So naturally, it's a very uh, reassuring moment. So uh, I think that it, sorry, I think that with a little shtick like that, I'll probably just say thank you and get off. Woody Allen. Woody couldn't be with us tonight because he's probably doing what he usually does during these award shows. Mel Brooks. Thank you. 
could not be with us tonight because maybe he's with Woody Allen. No, he's not. He's right here. Sid Caesar. I didn't, I didn't, was it, that's it? <laughs> My God. I really, I, I, uh, I'm really taken back. I just want to say thank you very, very much. I, I just want to say that from where I came back from, it's quite an honor to have your, your own peers vote you a lifetime award that to me is something that's very, very special. And it's a, quite an honor. And I want to thank a man who, who really believed in me when I didn't even believe in myself, Mr. Larry Spellman, who took me in. And I just want to say thank you very, very much. You know, real enjoyment, I have found out, is appreciation. And I truly appreciate this, not only just the big things in life, but truly the just getting up in the morning, being able to, to laugh, especially at myself, when I couldn't anymore. And now I can. And I just want to thank you very, very much, every one of you. Thank you. And Jonathan Winters. emotional evening. <laughs> We're coming right down to the wire now and many people either want to eat or go to the bathroom. <laughs> you all get one of these? Everybody's in our business, aren't they? <laughs> I want to just say a, a, a special warning to all the news media. How dare you venture into comedy. <laughs> that includes the anchor men and anchor ladies and the weather people. You know who you are. Mm. You're probably saying, what's the story on the suit? <laughs> well, I've always, I don't know about you, lived in this house of correction. <laughs> and my dad was always, stop it, stop it. Or so I killed him early. <laughs> yeah! uh, the little railroad watch as the little girl gets on the train. Come on, honey. Ooh. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I remember, it seems like yesterday, but it's a long, long time ago. People like Sid Caesar and such a great, great talent there. A number of great talents in this room tonight. But I remember, uh, and I'm sure a, a lot of us do that are like myself, elderly, or maybe some of those kids. I remember him, almost. Um, Lenny Bruce, who was a guy that just came out, you know, and 
The guy here tonight, uh, he and I uh, were along that same road together, Dick Gregory. And uh, Mort Saul, a great talent. And all of us uh, wore strange things, and that's the reason if you don't see the little black tie and the electric tuxedo. Besides, I never went to the Antarctic. I thought I did, <laughs> but I really didn't see Admiral Byrd. I never touched those little people or birds. But I want to thank you, seriously, because laughter is, needless to say, an important thing. It's always been to me. I, uh, I had two uh, great parents that were always kind of going, oh, they just didn't, you know, that was the whole thing was, I really don't know. <laughs> but um, now oh, they know. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> but uh, I, I thank all of you, and I thank all those people out there that are, are, are hopefully looking in, doing this. Keep your hands active, otherwise paralysis of the hand. <laughs> I want to thank my wife, I want to thank my kids, and there are a lot of people, and I'm already getting a white hand from a, a woman way in the back. All right, dear, if you want me that much, I'm coming. American Comedy Awards will continue in a moment. We'd also like to announce tonight the winner of the Funniest Male Performer of the Year. The nominees are Woody Allen, Jay Leno, David Letterman, Eddie Murphy, and Robin Williams. And the winner is Robin Williams. Robin's not here tonight. Uh, we'll accept that award in absentia. And the winner of the Funniest Mile in a motion picture. Read envelope, it's saying, all right. God, you've had me up here 16 times. I'm gonna take my time. The nominees are Woody Allen for Hannah and Her Sisters, Rodney Dangerfield for Back to School, Danny DeVito for Ruthless People, Tom Hanks for Nothing in Common, and Steve Martin for Little Shop of Horrors. And the winner is Woody Allen for Hannah and Her Sisters. And, says, Good, Good night. night. The American Comedy Awards, brought to you by Dodge, setting new standards of performance. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper Butler. The American Express Card membership has its privileges. Don't leave home without it. And Bud Light, everything else is just a life. Eastern, by assisting with air transportation to Los Angeles, is proud to have been a part of this evening's American Comedy Awards. Eastern, the one to the sun. Morgul, the friendly Drell, this is Gary Owen speaking. <laughs>